Uh, thank you, Raina. All right, everybody. Uh, welcome again. And we are about ready to get started here. Hello. Um, and what we're going to do today, this is sort of the, the home stretch of our November uh, classes. And we're going to be doing a two-parter. So we're going to start tonight. And then next week, we will finish it. And I will get to the, the details of that in a moment. Um, but this is part one of two. Uh, for the remaining uh, landscape sessions that we've got scheduled for, for November. Um, so, so we have got uh, quite a bit to get, um, get, set it, uh, get set up. So I want to get right into it and show you, um, show you what we need to get sorted out here. So let's go right to the supply list, which is sort of our standard issue acrylics. Um, I photographed here uh, the, uh, the different colors that you're gonna need, um, mediums. Um, so we've got titanium white, I've also got black and I've got yellow ochre, raw umber. Um, the three primary uh, colors, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, cadmium yellow. It doesn't, like I've said uh, in, in previous classes, it doesn't matter exactly what your blue, red and yellow are, as long as they're primary colors. Um, meaning, you know, stop sign red and sky blue and, you know, like honeybee yellow or something like that. Those are, those are the three bright colors that you need. And really, I mean, you should be able to get uh, a ton of mileage out of this palette. Um, uh, you don't need, you know, all of the secondary colors. If you've got the primaries, you can mix the secondaries and then make derivations of those. Um, so the, the color array is, uh, is pretty flexible. Um, if, you've, if you've got those six or seven colors, you should be good. Uh, paper towel and a rag of some sort is also handy. I've got my paper towels, but I can't, oh, they're my rag. Um, and then a container with water in it because acrylics are water-based paint. And then a variety of uh, acrylic or oil paint brushes. Watercolor brushes are not ideal for this heavier paint, so um, be aware of that. They, they will work, but they're not, they're not perfect. Um, and then we're gonna need something to paint on. Uh, canvas, wood, paper, um, all of those will work if you prime them first with gesso, which is in our case, sort of an acrylic, an acrylic um, base, um, that will probably do the trick. Um, if your canvas is already treated with that, you don't need to worry about it. So uh, it really depends upon what you're dealing with. Um, and then I'm also going to use uh, some acrylic gel medium, which I'll get into as we start working. So what we're going to be working on is this is a photo I took of a beautiful place, if I may say so. This is actually Abel Tasman uh, National Park uh, in New Zealand. And it is it's kind of a, got a tropical, it's in the South Pacific. Um, it's not quite tropical. It's not quite subtropical. It's it's sort of, it's it's kind of like living in I don't know like the equivalent of like North Texas or something. It doesn't look like North Texas, but in terms of where it is in, in terms of uh, the equator, that's about the equivalent uh, spot. You know, sort of sort of the lower half of the United States. Uh, it's pretty warm. It's pretty temperate. Doesn't snow a lot there, um, and it's it does have kind of a tropical feel to it. And I thought I might, since these, uh, this picture kind of reminded me of these paintings, I might also show you, um, these are three paintings uh, that I pulled off the internet, straight, pretty much straight um, landscapes by an artist named Paul Gauguin, who was uh, a post-impressionist, which is a broad category. So late 1800s um, in France. Um, and he spent, I believe, the last 15 years or 10 or 15 years of his life in Tahiti. Um, he went there, I think, three different times and painted some really wonderful paintings uh, from that part of the world. So um, we'll just sort of have those in the back of our head, uh, maybe do a little kind of color amplification and color referencing of, of Gauguin's work as we're going through our view of Abel Tasman National Park. So that's what we're gonna work from. If you wanna take a screenshot of that, I, I usually like to leave that up uh, for a few minutes. So um, go ahead and take that screenshot and you can use it as a reference. I've got it in the, um, in the scene that we'll be working on with the overhead view of my, of my canvas and stuff. 
but um, if you find it helpful to have sort of a bigger um, a, a bigger picture to work from, this is your chance. So go ahead and, and go ahead and uh, get that picture uh, taken. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one, boom, everybody's got it. So let's go to the overhead scene. Okay, so I have here, my, of course, my favorite blue uh, uh, painter's tape. This has actually been recycled in about three or four different um, paintings. I just peel it off, put it on the back of a chair, put my new canvas in here, and um, I'm ready to go. Um, one thing that I have done here, you can see that this was previously gessoed white. This is canvas, um, and this is the edge of the canvas. And I've, I've stained it with um, a yellow ochre, sort of an earthy color. Uh, it's not a bright yellow. Um, but you really can stain it with anything, um, something kind of, you know, middle of the road, just to give it something that's not a bright white. I like to kind of get rid of um, the brightness of the canvas. It gets a bit, you get a better read on the colors um, and also allows white to be added later as kind of, a, of an accent or a highlight instead of it uh, being, being something you're fighting against the whole painting. So that's sort of my standard procedure. This was a favorite. Uh, way of preparing uh, canvases and boards for um, uh, Peter Paul Rubens, who's a, a Baroque artist um, in the 1600s in Flanders, which is near Belgium and the Netherlands uh, in Europe. Um, and he would, almost all of his paintings have this underneath them. Um, so, you know, if Rubens can do it, so can we. Okay, so here we are. And I've got some of the paints out already. And one thing that I'm gonna talk about today um, that's a little bit different. Um, I, I these I just saved these from last time, so I'll probably get some mileage out of it, and I'll need to refresh it with others. But there's basically two kinds uh, of paints: sort of your cheaper brand, which is uh, you know student grade, or what do they call these here? This is the academic level. This is sort of the artist artist loft brand, and then you've got um, these professional grade, um, and and basically what that means is the professional grade, um, they've got more pigment in them. So they're a little bit brighter, they're a little bit more saturated. Um, and generally speaking, they tend to be a little bit thicker. So they have a little more body to them. And I'm gonna use both of these at different times during uh, the painting process here. I'll probably mostly use these professional ones next week when I wanna make heavier impasto uh, touches uh, as I'm finishing the painting up. Um, so this is probably what I'm primarily going to be using tonight. You do not have to do it this way. You can use these for the whole time. Uh, like when I'm, I'm when I'm working on something of my own, I generally have sort of really swanky uh, professional grade or artist grade uh, paints and use those from start to finish. But on occasion, I will, especially when I'm doing an underpainting, I'll use the the sort of the cheaper brands, and um, you know trying to get a lot of mileage out of it for, for um, the underpainting. Okay, so that's where we're gonna go. Um, and as always, if you have questions as we're going through this, um, feel free to throw them in the chat um, and they will get relayed to me and we can sort of go back and forth and, and hopefully troubleshoot anything uh, that you have. So I'm just gonna start um, by doing kind of a nice washy uh, underpainting with, let's see, what's, yeah, I used that one last time. Let's use a little bit of a bigger one. So I'm going to use this one. This is a little bit bigger. I think last time I used a six. This is a, a number eight. This is just sort of a, a cheap uh, bristle brush, a little bit rougher. Um, it's a round. Um, so that's, uh, you know, sort of a all-purpose utilitarian brush. And that's what I'm going to start with here. And I'm just going to use uh, kind of this center raw umber to, to get myself uh, started. So I'm going to water this initial layer down um, and I can do it right on here. So I'll just pull a little bit of this and just thin it out, dilute it. And I'm, I'm basically going to, uh, to draw as I'm, I'm laying things down. Um, and I'm not, as, as you've seen me, if you've done this uh, before with me, um, you see in the beginning stages, I'm not too worried about uh, getting everything perfect at this stage. So I'm just gonna start blocking in kind of darker, more dominant shapes. Uh, there's a nice big hair on there, which is slightly, there it is. There you go. All right, and 
just kind of lay these uh, preliminary values in. So this, this central island, I'm just gonna start with that. Um, just beyond that is the horizon line. Yeah, let's go with that. So this needs to be a little bit bigger. And once again, I'm using this, um, this, this picture here as kind of uh, a guideline. I, I kind of want to throw in some Gauguin little flourishes and, and you know, so I may add some stuff um, as I'm going along. So, you know, this will be the basic thing that I'm going with, um, but I'm, I'm going to leave it open for uh, opportunities to expand on this. And I'm going to do a really, really basic kind of underpainting here. This foreground stuff is probably going to be my darkest uh, area in a lot of places, especially over in this kind of darker green corner. Um, you know, where this little fern branch comes through here, uh, I'm not too worried about, you know, drawing any of the details there. I'm just kind of blocking things in as, as I usually do at this stage. So over here, same idea. Uh, just kind of building up the structure of the painting. Kind of like to think of this as like this the skeleton, and then I'll put the uh, the meat on it later. There we go. Let me throw a little bit more dark in there. And once again, this is all um, this is all going to probably be covered up, but it just sort of gives me um, enough of a reference to work with here. So I'll just firm up a little bit of this and get that a little bit darker. It's kind of got this nice mounded look right there. Let's get a little bit of that shape in there. There we go. All right. So far, so good. No train wrecks yet. Hey, Mike. Which is always good. What kind of um, paper are are you mixing the paints on? Oh, this this is a uh, it's called a disposable palette. It's basically wax paper, and it comes in a sheet of usually fifty or something like that. These are great. Just make sure that when you are using it, there's a real shiny side, and then there's more of a matte side. It's obvious which is the uh, which is the top. But you know, as they get older, you kind of peel them off and you might forget which end is which. And generally speaking, the shiny side is the side you want to work on. And they're great for uh, doing exactly what we're doing. Just kind of getting a rough layout of our color. Oh, I got some yellow in there somehow. OK, all right. So now I'm just taking a little uh, bath with the uh, brush. I'm not taking a bath. The brush is taking a bath. And um, I'm going to switch colors here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right into the blues. This is a really blue heavy painting. Um, it's still everything's still wet, which is fine. Um, with acrylics uh, and with oils for that matter, you know, th things are, you, you can work, you know, pretty much uh, as fast or as slow as you want. Um, I want to, I want to get my goal today is to get all sort of the big color shapes in. Um, and then next time I really want to start adding like some of this intricate little detail. And I want to start working with some heavy paint, which I haven't really done before. I have, or I haven't really, um, talked about it explicitly that way. So that's, that's what the, the plan is here. So I'm just laying in colors, uh, today and my blues are, are pretty much all used up. So I'm going to get, um, I'm actually going to use two different types. So this is one of the student grade or academic level. And then this is the professional grade. So this is cobalt blue and this is ultramarine blue. And you say, well, they both look blue to me. Well, they are both blue, but they are different and they, and they react different to other colors, which is really the important part because the, the, the water in this part of the world um, has a really kind of uh, turquoise look to it. And it's really hard to get that with 
um, an ultramarine blue, which is which is this one. So I like to have both of them. Cobalt blue doesn't exactly get us there either, but it gives probably a closer um, proximity. If you've got uh, cerulean blue, cerulean blue is ideal um, for what basically the sky and the water would be uh, looking like. Um, cerulean blue is sort of your classic sky blue, and it's sort of this powdery blue that's going to that's going to end up being here. I don't really have that, so um, I'm kind of forced to. I ha I have it, but I have it in oils. Um, so later on, if I wanted to, I could go over this in oils um, because you can paint on top of acrylics with oils. I'm not going to do that for this demo, but for the purposes of mixing, um, cobalt is probably a closer approximation of what we'll need. Um, the ultramarine is going to be good. Uh, I'm going to sort of stick with that for the sky, and I'm going to try and, and sort of get um, the sky first and then work my way down into the water. And you can't really see it in this, but there is a little between, you know, right on the horizon, there is this kind of line right along the horizon of these mountains that are in the distance behind this central island. So it kind of goes like this. So there's going to be sky, that sort of mid blue purple, and then the, um, then the water. So all three of those are going to be interacting. It's going to be pretty subtle. Um, but I'm going to start with the sky uh, first. And I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of this white here. I just want to get it a little lighter. It's got a little bit of green. I'd already mixed this up last week. Um, and that'll, be, that'll actually be, eh, I don't know if that's going to be right. I don't think it will. Maybe I'll start with the water since I've already got this green in here. It's actually kind of, this is the color that I would have mixed anyway. So let's let's go change change of tact here. We're going to go with with the water first. So I'm going to use the cobalt blue. Um, and again, if you've got the cerulean blue, um, that's that's another option as well. So uh, cobalt cerulean will both work. So I'm just adding more blue to this green that I've mixed up. The yellow that I used for that to mix up that was this. Um, it's called Brilliant Yellow. It's this Artist Loft brand. Um, and it's just kind of a middle of the row, really bright yellow. Um, so like a, a lemon yellow. What won't work for this is like a yellow ochre, which is an earthy yellow. That's a little bit too, um, for lack of a better word, dirty. Um, it doesn't really give us the color uh, that we want for that. So this is kind of my Abel Tasman greenish blue turquoisey thing I've got going on here. Just trying to get it. So I'll just start with that. And I'm gonna come at it, I'm gonna come at it pretty um, pretty heavy. That doesn't look too bad actually. I can live with that for the time being. And not, you know, I'm not trying to get it just so right now. I'm I'm you know, working around a little bit of what I've already put in here, but I just want to just lay the color in. And you notice how I'm leaving a kind of a little breathing room here. I'll, I'll give you a little close up of that. Um, that's sort of like a, a great way to kind of leave an instant highlight. Um, I may not end up using it, but I don't like to cover everything, every square inch of my painting uh, right off the bat. Uh, it's, you know, it just sort of allows the different layers to kind of uh, react with each other a little bit more. So I'm just kind of throwing a little bit of this in there and leaving some of the yellow open to give it a little bit of light and sense of variety of, of color variety. Not a huge fan of kind of monochromatic, you know, everything is one color or two colors or whatever. I like a little bit of variety. So we'll just take it back out here. There we go. Maybe give it a little bit of medium to spread it a little bit more. So the medium basically acts like water, but it, it allows uh, the body of the paint to, to stay intact. You don't lose that kind of, uh, you know, sort of meaty, painty quality. 
unlike water, which makes it really runny. All right, I'm kind of running out here. So I'll dip back into that green. Kind of mix up a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm not a big, I, I don't always try and mix up every single uh, ounce of paint all at once. Um, I, I kind of like to allow a little bit of variety to seep in. So this one's a little bit darker than what I put here. But if you look at the actual picture that we're working from, that's exactly what's going on. So I'm, I'm kind of keeping that idea intact and, and not worrying about it all being the same color. Because any ocean that you ever look at or any sky that you ever look at is not going to have a blue sky. It's going to have a variety of different blues and sometimes purples and yellows and greens and who knows what else. So, um, you know, allow, allow for a little bit of latitude with, with how the color plays out. All right. And again, if you've got any uh, questions or problems or issues as you're working along, don't hesitate to throw them up in the chat there. Okay, just blocking this in. It's all the same color, but basically the values, the tones, uh, there's a little bit of, of, of latitude with that. Some of it's a little darker, some of it's a little whiter. If I wanted it to get lighter, I could just throw in some more of this white, pull in a little bit more blue, so it gets a little bit more blue on the blue-green scale of things. Yeah, so that's that's slightly different, but again, I'm not I'm not worried about uh, precision here. I, I'm I'm actually building in, and so I just added a little bit of medium there because it it changes from you know section to section. And if you looked at the paintings of Gauguin, which I showed you in the very beginning, um, he wasn't too concerned about being 100% accurate too. I mean, he was broadly speaking considered an expressionist painter. So he used kind of color as a, as a device to, to get him to where he wanted to go. Um, so you know, that's, that's what makes Gauguin's paintings, Gauguin's paintings, Gauguin's choices. And that's what's going to make this painting my painting. It's the different choices that I, I put in here. So I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm sort of uh, I'm sort of thinking along as I go. And it's like, all right, so I need this to contrast with that. So it's definitely a value shift. This is darker, this is lighter. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use more white when I when I move to the sky. Um and I'm going to go away from green and go more purple. So, and I'm gonna use a different base uh, color uh, of my, for my blue. So I'm gonna use the ultramarine. So I'm just cleaning my brush again. I wanna use basically the same, uh, the same size brush. So I'm just cleaning this one off. Um, it's already got a lot of blue in it, but um, I do wanna make sure that, you know, that sort of green element is out of there. So I'm dirtying, my, my dirty water is here. And then when I feel like I'm good, I, I just give it one more bath in the, uh, in the clean one. And that, that sort of gives me a good indicator. If I see a bunch of paint come out in there, I know that I need to uh, give it a little bit more attention. All right, so now I'm gonna take ultramarine blue and red. So we're, we're sort of into the purple phase. And ultramarine, um, there's a lot of people that, you know, sort of contend that ultramarine blue is already sort of on the purple end of things. And I would agree, actually, it's, it's got a, it's got sort of a dipper, uh, a deeper um, uh, hue to it. It's just a little bit, a little bit darker than the cobalt. And I'm going to load this up and I'm going to get some white out here. 
And I'm going to use the professional grade white. It tends to be a little bit, these, these colors tend to be a little bit more opaque, meaning this, and this is brand new. Probably have the other one open. So I got two tubes of this. Let me see if I got the other one open. Um, that's another quality of these is they're not as, as thin as, uh, as the other grade, the more academic grade. So these, these have a, a little bit more, what's called opacity. So they're, they're made to be stronger. So I'm just throwing in a ton of white here. This would probably be a good place to start. Maybe a tiny bit more blue. Let's throw some of this cobalt in just for kicks. Not putting any of the green in. It's really important that the green stays separate. So I'm kind of blending my blues. I'll do that every now and then just to sort of keep me on my toes. All right, and I'm just gonna lay this in here. And I just wanna put it right next to there. So yeah, that's, that's lighter and it's more purple. And that's, that's, about, that's about where I'll start with this. And I'm being really heavy with this, at least initially. Um, and that horizon is pretty darn straight. I'm really going to sort of build up the edge there. Really accenting that, that the light of this sky against the dark of that, that island. There we go. And again, there, there is sort of a gradation here. It looks like a little darker down here and then it gets a little lighter. Then it kind of gets dark up there. Again, I'm just trying to get the, the, basic, uh, the basic color down, the idea of, all right, this is a lighter blue, it's a more purple blue, um, and, I'll, and I'll sort of tend to the differences and the, and the variety. You know, sort of adding a little texture in here. Um, this is what, another good thing about bristle brushes is is you can allow those sort of rough brushes to kind of create a little bit of um, you know sort of movement to your brush strokes. Um, the the smoother brushes don't often do that as well. Um, I'm gonna maybe come back later and uh, do a little enhance on you know this might be a cloud later. This might be a little wisp of a sort of a very subtle cloud. All right, throw some of this blue in here. Okay, let's see, it goes over there. And you know, I might be covering up an area right now where later on I'll put another branch coming out here or whatever. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about, you know, everything being in its proper place at this stage. I'm more worried about how the overall feel of the painting looks color-wise, value-wise, um, just sort of general layout and design. But I think the separation here between these two is pretty good. Um, I'm gonna end up, um, I think, getting a little bit lighter with this color that I'm painting now, this sky blue, this more purple blue, ultramarine blue. So I'll just take a little bit of that white and Maybe warm it up a little bit. I'm going to throw a tiny bit of bright yellow in there. It is a bright sunny day. And when you see a bright sunny day, that usually means that there's warmth. I'm just going to throw that in there. Use maybe a little bit more of this medium. Medium makes your, your colors a little bit more transparent. So they're kind of, I'm, I'm kind of interacting with what's going on here. This is almost kind of like an oil painting approach in the sense that uh, working wet into wet, like this blue is still wet and I'm throwing some wet paint in, into it. Just want to lighten this middle area a little bit more fully. Just give it a little bit of atmosphere, kind of 
make a little bit of variety so it's not kind of monolithically blue in the sky. Rarely is it. And then one thing you'll you'll notice, and I did this, I believe in the first week's uh, class, or maybe it was the second, I forget, of November. And with clouds, when we, when we talked about uh, painting skies and clouds, is as things get closer to the horizon, they are in effect getting further away from you. So to keep with that idea of perspective, as things get smaller in space, maybe I can just put a smaller line of clouds right through here. I mean, everything's kind of wispy and in the distance. So I can just add a little kind of line of clouds, kind of push it back a little bit. These are a little bit bigger, bigger shapes. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it is, it is a little um, uh, indicator to the viewer that like, okay, this is further away because it's smaller. And then this is a little bit bigger. So this is probably more overhead. So maybe I'll just add a little, little punch to this bit here. Keeping in mind, you know, I'm, I'm basically just experimenting with where I'm putting things at this stage. I'm looking at the photograph, but I'm also going, oh, this might look a little better if I, you know, have something over here, but later on it might get covered. So um, I'm really just um, kind of, kind of playing a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go to the opposite end here. I'm going to take some stronger blue, mix this in, and maybe go up top with that. So I'm darkening sort of our base color here. Throw a little bit of that red in there. There we go. That needs to get a little darker. So again, mixing it on the fly. Not trying to get it all mixed up perfectly to start with. Yeah, so that's a little better. That's another thing that you, you'll notice when, you, when you're painting skies is it tends to be darker towards the top and then it gets lighter towards the horizon. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just kind of reiterating that idea a little bit. Just sort of defining the shape a little bit, sort of creating a little bit of a, a nice diagonal right across there, which is always helpful. Diagonals tend to create a little bit of um, movement, energy, break up the kind of monotonous up, vertical, across, horizontal, give it a little bit of a, a, a diagonal, and, and you tend to have a little bit more visual um dynamics at work there all right all right I, I can live with that for now maybe i'll just break that up a little bit breaking up the band all right there we go all right let's separate these a little bit all right now one other thing that i want to do is i want to kind of create this this little ridge here of these mountains in the background. It's really subtle, you can barely see it, um, but it's there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of tilt things a little bit more towards the purple end. So I'm adding more red. So that'll be sort of bluish purple, um, reddish purple, and then going over here to this turquoise. So I'm, I'm just creating a, a slight transition. So now I'm basically just going over top of what I've already done. I could probably use a different brush. And you know what? Do as I say, not as I do. I am going to change brushes here because frankly, I should. It's a smaller area. It requires a little bit more detail. So I'm going to use a, uh, a synthetic sable brush and it's much smaller it's a number three the other one i was using was a was an eight so um and then i'm also going to mix in some of this medium to give it a little bit of translucency so it kind of integrates into what i've already got down here there we go and i'm going to make it a little bit more noticeable than it actually is on the picture 
because I can, and it's my painting. I can do whatever I want. It's my paint and I'm gonna take it home if I want to. All right. So just um, trying to follow that horizon. This is kind of a tricky little spot because where this where this goes, it's it kind of <laughs> the horizon is like right on the ridge of this this uh, island here. So I'm I'm just pretending I don't see the horizon here. I'm just putting it right up against the island because in actual fact that's that's what's going on. I'm going to go and kind of reiterate this and and uh, work that in a little bit more fully. But for the time being, I think that'll work. So you can see how that as a as a more purple, as a little darker shape, it comes out from the lighter here, the lighter um, uh, sky. I'm going to probably change that and make it even lighter. Uh, and it's also a different color than this. So even if this were the same value, which is which it is more or less, um, meaning they have the same level of darkness, I'm still um, I'm still getting some separation between those because this is a redder color and this is a greener color. Green, uh, and you know, this is not green. It's more of a turquoise. It's a blue, a blue uh, green. And this is a red blue. So red and green are opposite of each other. They're complements of each other. So that tiny little bit of tension between the purple and the green separates them even more uh, because they have those complementary colors uh, working. All right, so I think I think that's good. And that um, this edge here is bothering me. So I am going to make that lighter. So I'm just going to take the brush that I have, sort of clean it off because it's it's the same color I was using. Um, and I'm going to go up here. I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And a lot more white because I want to make that even lighter. And I'm going to throw that yellow in just to give it a little bit of warmth. Not too much that it turns it into tur turquoise, but um, even a tiny bit can add a little bit of brightness to it. And again, I will use um, some of the medium. There we go. Yeah, that's better. So I'm just going to take that and now I can I can use that lighter color to define that edge even more. And it's going to take a, you know, a little bit of some kind of feathering to to get it up into that sky. I'm just, just creating the edge at this stage. All right, so now my paint is kind of running out, which is actually perfect timing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of bring it up so that we don't have this, you know, white band along the horizon. I mean, sometimes it, you can get away with that, but um, sort of losing this distinct shape of the, uh, of that cloud, but I think it's more important to kind of separate the horizon there. So sacrificing a little bit of the cloud distinction for horizon distinction, if that makes sense. Makes perfect sense in my brain, but that usually doesn't mean much for anybody else. So if it doesn't, let me know. Okay, kind of like that. And I might even go lighter right on the horizon. Just kind of lightly throwing a little bit. And, and this is where you can kind of get specific and you know heavy handed for certain areas that need it. So I'm, I'm really putting a lot of a lot of white around this center. Bit because this is going to get darker. This is going to get a you know a much deeper green here. Um, so I am I'm really kind of concentrating 
the lightness around this, this area. I'm not, you know, it's not like the sun is rising over here or anything like that, but it's just going to be an area that allows me um, to push this darker and that, and that dark will really kind of set that off. All right, that looks pretty good. So working a little wet into wet, that's another good thing with the medium. Um, as you're, as you're using the medium, the medium tends to make the, um, paint wetter longer. Um, that's a problem that people have oftentimes with acrylics is it just dries so fast and I couldn't get everything. You put a little medium in there and you get a little bit more breathing, breathing room with that, with that, you know, quick turnover timeline. All right. So let's see. I could add some more variety into this. I may, I may deepen that a little bit. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to this using that same brush in cobalt. Got some of my green over here, which I mixed up, which is cobalt and um, this bright yellow right here. So just trying to go for that. Um, nice turquoise. And this time around, I'm really, really trying to get things a little darker. And I don't know if you can see it too well, but there is a slight little kind of reflection right up against, right up against the island. So I'm just going to highlight that. And then also there's kind of a nice sort of flowy area where some of this deeper water maybe is, is kind of creating a little bit of variety. So this is a little bluer um, than green, but I kind of like the way it's reacting. I'm, I'm putting it on pretty thinly. So that green uh, underpainting that I put in is, is kind of doing a nice job of, of, uh, of integrating this, this second coat that I'm putting on here. This is all dry now. I'm not getting any kind of wet into wet. I'm trying to get rid of some of this yellow ochre too, because that, that's kind of distracting. I really want to bring that out. All right, that's looking, that's looking pretty good. All right. So I just basically made a slightly bluer, but definitely darker um, tone to this turquoise color. And that's, uh, that's kind of created a little bit more variety in here that's um, looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. All right, let's throw a little bit of that in there. It's kind of letting the different layers now kind of work with each other. I view these first, you know, these first hour or so of a, of a painting like this is kind of like, a, it, you're, you're just kind of trying to feel your way, just trying to get the sense of, all right, are these colors working together? Do I have the right values? You know, what, what else do I need to do? I'm not trying to like uh, solve, uh, you know, a Gordian knot here and make everything just perfect at this stage. Um, it's, it's when I feel like I've got the, the, the bones of it established and it's, you know, it's looking, uh, it's looking pretty solid. Uh, then, I'll, then I'll get into a little bit more, um, a little bit more detail. Okay. Hey, so I'm, yes. Elizabeth would like to know if you can use the same clean brushes for watercolor, acrylics, and oil, or if you should use different brushes for different types of paint. Um, for acrylics and oil, as long as you're cleaning your brushes, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, never mix them together. Um, as, as long as you're not using them on the same day um, and you're cleaning them well, I think oil and acrylic brushes are one and the same, frankly. Um, you know, I go into art supply stores and, you know, it'll say, oh, acrylic brushes, and then it'll have the oil brush section. When I'm looking for brushes and I'm going to be using oils, I'll look at acrylic brushes and I'll look at oil brushes and I, I treat them in my head as the same thing. Um, watercolor brushes are a different animal altogether. Watercolor brushes I never use for oil or acrylics. Um, they're just different. They're, they're meant to absorb water and these kind of brushes uh, and these kind of brushes, these sables um, and the, the bristle brushes, those are meant to push paint around more than they are to absorb water. 
Um, so it, it really uh, takes advantage of what oils can do and, and then watercolor brushes take advantage of what watercolor can do. So I don't mix those two, but oil and acrylic, they're the same thing to me. As long as I'm cleaning my brushes and as long as I'm not using them back to back. So if there's a little residual oil, I would not then go into acrylics and vice versa. But the next day when everything's dried out and it's clean, go for it. Okay, what should we do next? I think we need to get some, some of these darks. Darks in here, darks in here. So I am going to go with another sable brush like this. See this one, I can tell I used it a long time ago for oils, but it's perfectly fine now. And the way I can tell is it's kind of stained. It just sort of has that look, but I just give it a little feel. There's no oil left over in there. It's good to go. So piggybacking on your previous question. Um, yeah, this is a good example of that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I actually think I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna try and mix this, this uh, green. This is kind of, so that green right there is, it's kind of a, a vivid green. So I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use some cobalt. So I have to get, I may actually mix them both. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what, see what I end up getting. So I'm gonna start with some cobalt. Here's my ultramarine. I'm probably gonna end up using a little bit of both. Um, and this island is very, very green. If you look at the, you know, picture up there in the corner. So I'm just going to start by trying to get a nice dark green. So I'm going to use uh, cobalt, and this is much thicker. This is much runnier. So that's an, that's one of the big differences I was mentioning about the professional grade and the student grade is these are a lot runnier. So it's it's like they're thinned with uh, you know, medium, which in practical terms, it probably is. Um, so you're just getting more, more pigment, more body to them. And then I'm taking some yellow, a lot of yellow, too much yellow. So I'll just add some more blue. Now this is a nice green. It's actually really nice, but it seems a little too green to my eye. So, um, Let's get up there a little closer. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of this um, raw umber in here just to darken it up and to make it a little mellower, not so over the top green. And I may even take, knowing that ultramarine tends to dull greens, um, meaning it's not got that bright quality, I'm gonna add a little bit of ultramarine to it as well. So it's got a little, it's got mostly cobalt. Um, a lot of this uh, brilliant yellow or cadmium yellow, uh, bright primary yellow. And then um, I'm adding a little bit of this ultramarine blue here to, uh, to darken it up. And if I really wanted to, I think I'll actually just start with this. So I'm thinking that's, that's pretty darn close to where I wanna be. And I am gonna at least initially start with uh, a fair amount of medium. One, for coverage's sake, try and get, you can see actually how close in color it is to the green down here. It's darker for sure, but it is, um, it is definitely sort of in this turquoise range. And again, there's a lot of variety in here, um, but I'm not, I'm not so worried about that right now. I'm just worrying about kind of the base color here. You know, sort of defining that edge a little bit. These little rocks right there. Getting that nice straight edge. So telling you that it's, it's sitting down in the water. There we go. So it's got, I think it's got the right, definitely the right value. It's dark enough. I just added that in right there. That's where I'm going to build my dream house, right on that little island. I can, it's a national park, so I would be breaking the law. All right.
Okay, got a little bit more of the medium here just to get just to get the paint down. Kind of runs back into this dark edge here. I'm keeping this, keeping this a little exposed. Kind of looks like a beach. Maybe this will be. I'll just put a big long beach along here. It also kind of makes a nice um, separation between the water and the land. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ride that wave figuratively, literally. All right. So this is a good thing about starting with medium is it allows uh, it allows me to kind of make the surface a little bit of a little bit broken so it's not so kind of uniformly heavy and dark. Um, so creating a little texture in here, let's just get a little bit more of a close up. So you can see like in here where you know the medium was a little bit uh, more applied, it's sort of open and creates this light area. Um, you could, if you if you wanted to, you could kind of work work some little ridges in there if you wanted to with with the back. It's it's a little easier to do that when you've got uh, medium on there because it one it just makes the paint a little bit open longer. Like if this dried out, I wouldn't be able to do all that kind of scratching textural stuff. Okay, so we're almost we're almost home. So now I'm just going to take some of this color. And I'm just gonna block some of this in here too. Cause I think this and this are actually really close to each other, which makes sense. Cause the vegetation here would probably be the vegetation there. So I have a, uh, as, as well as um, an art background, I have a little bit of a natural history background. So like I know my birds pretty well and some plants. So it's like, oh, all right, natural history helping me out in my art. Excellent. I knew there was a reason for that class load that I was taking, which really didn't make sense with anything else that I was taking. All right, so come in here. I'm gonna mix up maybe a slightly different green. There we go. Maybe put a little bit more of the ultramarine in there. And just kind of laying in, that's a little bluer, but that's fine, it'll, it'll work. Okay, Let's see there's some of that over there. This is about where I want it to be at about this time. So lucky me, sometimes it works. Throw some more of that in, get a little more of the yellow in, green it up. Maybe go with a little bit of a lighter green, just trying to build up the general value. And, and again, not trying to cover everything up, uh, really just uh, getting myself uh, a series of colors and textures that I can work with next week um, uh, to sort of, you know, tie this all together. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on the fly mixing a, a fair amount of blue greens, yellow greens, and, and, and just uh, keeping my options open. All right, so that sort of dark brown that I did early on is paying dividends now because I've already got sort of a, a dark layer in there. And so this is just going to make it a little bit more, maybe throw a little bit of this brown in just to give myself sort of a more deeper blue. And then one last thing, I'm going to add a fair amount of medium up here so I get some nice flow to it. Uh, add a little more blue, add a little more umber. This is umber and blue are kind of my, it's kind of my go-to mixed black. Um, I could use black, um, but I like to control the black a little bit more. So this is more of, uh, you know, it's got some brown in it. It's got some blue in it. So I'm just going to create a little bit darker little passages in here 
with this mixed blue that I've concocted. There's nothing wrong with the color black. Um, I just feel like it's really heavy. Um, and I feel like I have a little more control with, with my own mixed black. Sometimes I would, I would mix in a little bit of a, a color called alizarin crimson, which is sort of a deep red, like a maroon. And those three colors, the uh, ultramarine blue or a dark blue in general, it doesn't really have to be ultramarine. So blue, the raw umber, and then that uh, alizarin crimson is kind of a nice triad of, of darker colors to make a nice mixed black. So I'm just hinting at, oh, look at this, what, 250, uh, 758. Different time zones. Okay. Uh -huh. Throwing a little bit more, just hint at maybe some of the details that I'll play around with next week. I think I'm going to add a little bit more uh, color to this foreground area, maybe a little bit more uh, interesting foliage. Now, just kind of cleaning my brush a little bit. All right, any final questions here before we wrap up? Everybody's in their own little- I'm not seeing any. Everybody looks like they're very busy painting. Yes, I know. You guys are so conscientious about your work. It's good. It's a monologue. All right, what else? Anything else? Let's throw that in there. Just getting set up for next next week. A couple little plants right there. Okay, I think that is a great place to be. So let's have a look, see how people did. Maybe do a little spotlighting as we uh, as we go around here. Anybody want to hold theirs up, and then we can get them spot lit. Let's see. All right, Sarah. Sarah, the, the loyal Sarah, who's been here, I think, for every class so far. That looks great. Really nice. Arthur Dove, you got to look at Arthur Dove. Okay, Janet. Ooh, yeah, nice. Nice, rich water color there. And that, that separation with the sky looks great. Perfect. That looks great. Gigi, all right, nice. Going with a red island, I like it. That's more, that's more in keeping with Tahiti. That'd be what Gauguin would go for. All right, anybody else got some? Okay. It's the person who's not Ed, but that's Ed's iPad. Yeah, oh, great, yeah, excellent. Kept that nice little beach area open so we can play with that next week. That nice bright area. Good, went more purple, even more purple on the, on the background stuff. Lois, yeah, going straight blue in that water. Just putting it right out of the tube, it looks like. That's awesome. And Angel is An Angela, Angela with two L's. Yeah, I like all that variety that you put in the foreground, sort of that yellow ochre too. That, that's going to work well. We'll get some mileage out of that. Susan, oh yeah, nice, very nice. Yeah, you really got that purple, purple turquoise separation thing. Yeah, that looks great. Liz, very nice. Lots of su subtle little color shifts in the water on that one, that looks great. Kylie, yeah, all right. More bright colors. It looks like you had like an actual turquoise color that you use. That's great. Cheryl. Yeah, that looks awesome. Great start. Great start. Lots to work with. Ooh, Tracy's got a lot of sort of nice earth tones shining through. I think that'll, that'll look well. We'll be able to use that well next week. 
Yeah, Sarah, another Sarah, good. Yeah, excellent. I like the sort of the wavy line of the uh, of the island in that one. Patty, Patty doing some drawing. Excellent. That looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love your name, if that's your name. That looks great. A lot of movement in that water and the sky for that matter too. Looks really good. Do you use a lot, looks like you used a lot of water in that one. All right, off to a rousing start. Next week, we will um, continue with this painting. I'll have everything set up like we did today and uh, we'll just dive right into it. I wanna show you some things with, with using really heavy paint and pasto paint with these, uh, with these more uh, thicker professional grade paints. Um, so if you don't have any of those and you wanna get some, you can. You can also get like a gel medium that, that thickens your paint. Um, it's, it's usually called like an impasto gel. Just make sure if you get something like that, that it's for acrylics because they do sell them in oils too. Just make sure that you're looking for the right thing. Okay, great job everybody. And um, thanks for coming. And I hope to see you all again next week. Have a wonderful week and thanks again. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>